As I'm traveling around out in the field and as I'm reading a lot of media articles, I'm seeing and hearing about companies that are, that are uh, stressed in terms of uh, their ability to operate in the recycling industry right now. Can you share a little bit about your observations there? Absolutely. You know, a decade or two ago, uh, we all remember those times when we would go to the recycling center with our recyclables and get paid for it. Well, those times have changed with the changing uh, recycling stream and with increased processing costs. And there is a cost to recycling, and we need to understand that if it's going to be a sustainable program. Obviously, when we're talking about a business transaction, you can't have true sustainability if you don't have economic viability. So, you know, one of the things that the, the industry has historically done is gone to market in a way that uh, would assume that the value in the material would cover the cost of collection and processing. Mm -hmm. And to Sharon's point, you know, we've seen deterioration in the value of that material for five years running now, and, and that's really unprecedented in our industry. So the business models that have is, existed historically are no longer durable, so we're looking to create more transparency in that business model and get into a revenue share uh, situation with a processing fee and that helps us share risk but also share opportunity with our customers. So we, we see a need to maybe readdress the business model a little bit. Uh, how much would education or awareness in terms of what's been happening uh, in the industry play into this? Oh, education is it's tremendously important in this. First of all, in educating the municipalities on the state of recycling and what it takes to make it sustainable, but also to educate the public so that they understand while recycling is very important, there's a cost to recycling. And in order to be a sustainable business, we've got to be able to uh, not only cover those costs, but, but make a profit. Certainly education is the cornerstone of any really good in, uh, environmental program and recycling program. You know, I think about markets uh, or parts of the United States that are a little bit more mature in the space, and they've really had a tremendous focus on public education and made big investments uh, in that education in those markets. And you see less residual, you see higher quality materials. You think about some other markets, some other areas of the country that might not have been recycling for as long, uh, a lot more contamination, a lot more uh, unacceptable materials uh, in the stream. And we see a lot of containers that frankly aren't clean, they're not empty, um, so that, that, that can present some challenges as well. And I've talked to recyclers who are quite stressed right now um, because of, uh, of the increased cost. And they tell me with increased education, they have been able to increase their, uh, their charges. And, and it's been beneficial. So, uh, you know, I think back to the comment on transparency and, and understanding the value uh, in the material stream. And when you're setting up a, a relationship with a customer that really does shine a light on that transparency uh, in creating this, this value proposition, if you will, both parties have skin in the game and uh, we, can, we can really drive behavior in a community when both parties are incented uh, to make sure that there's high value materials in, 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 in the recycling stream. So in terms of the changes in, in the material, uh, can we talk a little bit about packaging and, and what effect that's had, as well as, of course, the, the educational understanding in terms of uh, what packages can be recycled? Well, with the changes in the recycling stream, we've seen a tremendous increase in the amount of plastics in the recycling, recycling stream and a lot less paper, and that really has impacted how you recycle and, and the value of those recyclables. So it's really important that um, customers realize that you cannot recycle aspirationally. You've got to recycle what's recyclable. Sharon mentioned uh, uh, print. There's a lot less newsprint. Uh, some of these facilities even set up five, seven years ago. Newsprint was the cornerstone of, of what we were trying to make and sell, um, you know, with, with the digital, the shift to digital. Um, less and less newsprint, right? Subscriptions are way down. So a big part of the material stream that we historically experienced is gone. Uh, similarly, we see other packaging that's changing. We see a lot more flexible packaging. So a lot of uh, food is now delivered or, or um, sold in flexible packaging, and that, that's much more difficult uh, for us to separate aggregate and then create value. You know, the, the value is really a weight-based game, so we get, we get paid for material uh, by the ton, but to process that material is a volume-based game. So as, this, as the material gets lighter, 
we have to process more material to get the same amount of weight that we used to have. So that drives costs. Your perspectives have really helped kind of spotlight the fact that things have changed over the past decade or so and the need for addressing the model uh, to do that is, is certainly uh, important. So do you see others in the industry that are trying to address the same types of issues? Absolutely. Most recyclers are looking at these issues and trying to figure out how you develop a business model that responds to the, to the significant changes in recycling to make it sustainable. Great to have some time with both of you. Sharon, I want to thank you for your time. Pete, you as well. And uh, we'll look forward to getting together and seeing how things are as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you.